this video, we're going to be walking through the new items in Station Smarts. We've got a lot of updates in this newest version of Station Smarts. I'm going to show you, starting on the main menu, those changes that we've made with the current version. So what you can expect once we update your solution. So the first thing that I want to point out is the very bottom above the setup button, we have a new popover. This is a training library. So this is going to be the list of all of those training videos that we have created and posted to our YouTube channel. They're now available within the solution. So you can click on any one of these. It's going to open that video within Station Smart, uh, sorry, within your internet browser, and you'll be able to view that video directly within YouTube. And then from there, you can go surfing through YouTube to find the other videos, maybe find other help content from us, or you can come back to Station Smarts and find another descriptor here and click on it and go to that video. So this is just a good view to help you see all of that help content that we have available. In this view, we also have, so it's gonna start out showing you everything, but if we have done any videos that have been specific for your department, so if we've recorded a training session, or if I've done a specific video to walk through a process that your department needed help with, then you can click the fire department view and it's gonna show you any of those videos that we have listed directly for you. Now, just for your information, these videos are posted to YouTube, but I always save them as private videos so other departments can't see them unless you specifically tell me that you'd like to make it available to other departments. So even though you can click here to view it in YouTube, you can't view that video unless you have the link. So you'd have to click here or you'd have to click a link that I provide for you in the email. So this will be the only way that you could see those videos unless you have the email from me. So this is now gonna make it an easy place for anyone in your department to be able to go and view those videos since they were by link only. The other tab that we have available in this view is a what's new. So essentially it's gonna be a list version of what this video is about. It's gonna tell you exactly what has happened that in this current version and tell you, give you a, a quick description of those items, the changes that we've made. And this is gonna be available for every version from here on out. Uh, so I'm gonna close that popover. You'll see on the main menu, if you have an older version of Station Smarts, this right-hand side may be new to you. All we've done is expand the whiteboard so that you have more space to see items that have been posted. So the roster is still here. It's just in a tabbed view and it has more space in this setup as well. So you're able to see a lot more information here. Okay, another change that we've made is to the information console. So if I click on the information console, you'll these tabs are the same. You'll see the inspections module hasn't changed at all, the inspections tab. But if you click on the employee tab, previous versions, it showed driver's licenses only. Now we have a view into the certifications. So if you've been putting in your certifications and your employee records, then you're able to actually view those here now as well and keep track of who's expiring soon. So a great example of this, I can come in here and say, I wanna look 30 days ahead and I'm gonna check for EMT. Oh, it looks like nobody's expiring in the next 30 days. So let's just re remove the 30 days. So now we're looking at all dates and we can see we've got a couple of EMTs here and it looks like they're, they've all got a little bit of time before they're gonna expire. So this is a great way to keep up with that information. You can click that little clear filter there to clear everything out. And we can also look by the person. So if I wanted to go in and find my record, then I can look at my name and see all of my certifications that have been listed so far and whether or not they're expiring soon. So that has been a change to the information console to allow you to be able to manage your certifications. Now you'll notice with the modules themselves on the main menu, we've made a lot of changes to the navigation here and we've also added some new modules and we have added what we're calling sub buttons. So you can see the first example of that is on the property module and that's the fee management sub button. Now the fee management has been available for a very long time in Station Smarts, but it has always been available through the activity tracker. You had to go to the activity tracker and then click on a fee manage here in the top. That is no longer the case. It's now a sub button on the property module. So if you, if you need to go to the fee management, then you can actually see that and it's gonna pop it out into a separate window now. So it's a little bit easier to, to manage. We've changed some names in here but it's essentially the same. The only other item that we have changed with the fee manage is we've added a separate report. So all of these tabs usually have given you this single report. It's kind of more of a money report, if you will. And we've made some minor design changes to it as well, just that in that it's subtotaling by whether or not a fee was collected. 
So this is essentially the fee no, this is the fee yes, like it has been, we've just kind of changed the titles there. And then in the all forms, when you click the popover, uh, I'm sorry, the print button, it's gonna give you a popover now. So number one is that same fee report that you've gotten from the other views. So that's the same report as the other tabs. But then if we click here and do the inspection summary report, this is more of a summary for all of your inspections. It does still include the fee information if you wanna use that, but it also includes the form ID numbers. So we've added a unique identifying number to all of the forms. So if you wanna use that as a, a fee inspection ID that you wanna give uh, you know, as an identifying number when you give the inspection, that's now available on this form. And the number of visits is also available. If you're following along by using your failures in your inspections, so every time you have a failure, you put it in the history, then these numbers are gonna show more than one. So you can see here uh, on this inspection, Main Street 65, you can see that says two. So in that case, that was an inspection where they failed. They placed the failure in the history and then the inspection passed. So the, the solution grabbed the failure as one and then the passing inspection as two. So it's it's filled in there too. Now it would, it would also show two if it's failed in the history and it failed again. And we place that in the history, it's gonna just show two. So it's gonna keep up with those counts. And then you can see here the second line, it shows a zero, that means it hasn't been inspected yet. So this is an, an example of one that was an inspection that's been scheduled, but it hasn't been inspected yet. So you can see there's a history count of zero there. And I've also changed a little bit in the descriptor here and the date selection. So you're able to have a little bit more control over what you're looking for in this all forms. And it's the same for the fee, collected and not collected. So we now have an all attribute here. So if you're looking for everything, then you can just click and it'll show everything. This is essentially the show all records view that you get when you come into the view anyway, but this will just do a, a pre-sort for you so it's easy to view everything. And then if you do inspect it, then it's going to get rid of any of those forms that would have a zero for the view count, for the inspection count. So any forms that have only been scheduled but they haven't been inspected yet, they're not gonna be in this view. And all of the filtering is also, when you click the print, it will remove anything you've marked as a test form. So that's true for any filter, any tab. That was a change that was made a little ways back, but if you have an older version of Station Smarts that you may not have this column here. But this will allow you, if you've just been doing test records somewhere in the solution, then you can mark them here as a test record if you wanna keep them. You still wanna keep them there so that other people can open it and view your example, but you don't want it to show up in any reporting, then you can just click here for, say, this is just a, a test form, and then it'll show there. So then if I run this report, you'll see there's no damage assessment category here because the, the only record for damage assessment was a test record. All right, so that is the fee management tab. And so as I said, there are some changes to that, but mostly it's the same. We've just moved to the location for how you get there and we've popped it out of the window. So it's really easy to just close it when you're finished with it. All right, so moving on, the other sub buttons we have available. So we have the repair request mechanics list. Now these buttons have been around for a little bit of time now, but if you have an older version of Station Smarts, you may not have seen these buttons or maybe you, you haven't used them yet. So because these are fairly new, I do wanna go ahead and show them to you. Uh, the mechanics list is just gonna take you to the activity tracker and it's gonna sort by apparatus maintenance category in the activity tracker. I'll show you that in a moment. The repair request is a quick way for someone within your department to give a request for a repair that needs to be made on an apparatus. So with this request, we're gonna come here to the apparatus and we're gonna say, I'm gonna say E1 as a test. And I'm just gonna say, you know, um, this is a test book. Notice I have to give a problem description. Uh, the continue button actually doesn't even show up until I say what apparatus and what's the problem. And once I click out of that, that field, I can click out of it or I can tab out of it, either way then the continue button will appear, so I can now submit the request. Notice that the category and the action are already decided. So this is a setup option that you decide in your solution. So if you don't want it to come through as a request, you want it to come through as open, then we can set that up in your setup that it'll automatically do that. But the default is apparatus maintenance and request. And then I'll click continue. 
and the system is going to automatically create a notification by pre-creating an email, just like we do in the rest of the system. It's going to copy in the person that requested the change and the person that needs to receive those requests. So this is the part where you determine who the email goes to. So in this particular solution, the email is going to the chief. They have marked that him as the person that receives all requests. Maybe you have a mechanic or, you know, a, a captain that handles all of the mechanic requests. Then you could have that be his name and and maybe the chief too, or the deputy chief as well. Anyone that you need to receive every single request is going to be copied here. And then the no the person that's requesting the change will also get a copy of that just so that they have a copy of what they sent out, you know, so it's kind of a verification that, that it was sent out. At the bottom of the email, we have a URL a link. So this is actually going to turn into a link once we hit the send button. And when we receive that, then it's actually going to be something where we can click on it. It'll open up that activity in Station Smarts after we give our username and password login. So I'm not going to send that view, but when we cancel that, then you'll see we get a view into the request. So you can see this opened in the activity tracker. It created an activity tracker entry for apparatus maintenance. And you can see it starts on the repair order and it starts out as a request. So as the requester, I can view the problem description that I gave. I can make changes here if I need to. And I can view the mechanics list. So I can see kind of what's been happening with this request as is. I can come back to this anytime to see what's been happening. As a mechanic, I can open this from anywhere. So I'm going to actually go through the mechanics list button. So as a mechanics list, I can say I want to view anything that's been happening recently. And here I have one item that's a repair request. So I can open that. I'm looking at it now. I'm going to make changes. So I'm going to say this is now open and I'm going to go to the service details tab. Within the service details tab, you can see we have apparatus maintenance. Now this category just got copied from the activity tracker category, but you can change it if you want to categorize it another way. This is your maintenance category, whatever you want to use. And then you've also got a subcategory and a problem type. So you can give that information as well. So based on the description that the requester gave, you can mark your own problem type if you want to track it that way as well. And you also have a repair urgency. So the person that requested the change could set this to be a high repair urgency. Maybe they didn't think it was. You took a look at it and you go, oh, this is actually high on my list of things that need to be taken care of. So you can actually mark that yourself as well. You can track the mileage, the run hours category, the parts store. Now the parts store is actually managed through this view, but you can also manage it in a separate window. So this is kind of like an inventory. You can treat it. If you keep an inventory of parts, then you can, you can treat this as your inventory. Uh, you can say where it is, how many you have, that kind of thing. But you can also just treat it as a history of parts that you have used before. So if you need to keep track of the part that you used previously, then that's available to you. So I'm just going to type in nonsense here. So you can see that this part description, it shows in red because I don't actually have that part in the part store as we just saw the part store is empty. So I'm going to give a part number here uh, and you can give the unit of measure, whatever vendor you got it from an invoice, their invoice number. If you want to keep track of that invoice number. And then there's the unit cost here. Now, when I click this update, it's going to say it's not in the parts store. You want to add it. Yep. And there it automatically added. So we don't have to even touch the parts store if we don't want to, but it is available to us. If you want to make changes, if you have a lot of parts you want to add or something like that, you can go ahead and do that directly in this view, but this will also allow you to update changes. So if this is actually $1.50, $1.25, and then you I can actually update this and it'll say, you know, this already exists. Do you want to update it? I'm going to say update. And then if I go in the parts store, you can see water now shows 150 instead of 125. So that just updates everything automatically. And you'll see that the parts total is down here at the bottom. So this is just keeping track of that total of what's happening in the parts store. Looking at the labor, you can grab the mechanic that's working on this and also track their labor hours. So maybe they've been working on this for 10 hours over the past week. They get paid at 
per hour for their labor, then you can keep track of that labor cost. And then we can also track if we send it out to a vendor at some point, then we can do that as well. And you can track what their labor cost is gonna be. And then you can also track the warranty work. So if it has any kind of warranty coverage, um, then you can track that as well. And then at the bottom we have mechanics notes. So we can say, you know, this is here. This is what I found. And then when I leave that field, it automatically dates it for me. And you can see if I hover in the tooltip, it's showing who left that note. So we have a record of, of who recorded that. And then in the repair order, I can see anybody that, that views this, they can't, this service details is not for everyone. So if, if someone comes in, they wanna see how their repair is going, maybe they're the person that requested it and they wanna see what, what's been happening to that re repair so far. They can't get in the service details, but they can see the mechanics notes to see what's been happening and they can see this is open. So I can, if I'm the requester again, I can come here and I can see, okay, the mechanic said it's open. That means he's working on it. Oh, and he's got some notes here. Oh, okay, so that's been taken care of. Then back on the service details, as the mechanic, I also have a place here to record some documents. So maybe I have a spreadsheet that I updated. Maybe there's a receipt or a quote from the vendor. Then I could post those items in there. And this is unlimited. You can just keep posting them. And then you can actually view them directly within the view. So it's easy to keep track of those. And then just above that, we have some links for you. So there's the part usage history. This is a history of any parts in the parts store that have ever been used on this apparatus. So if you're not quite sure what the part was before, you can just come in here and you grab that, go to the parts store, paste it in. And then if you click on that, it'll actually bring that item up so we could choose that. And then we also have the maintenance history that opens it up in the apparatus module. And of course, another link directly into the parts store. So this is essentially their, your apparatus items that you have available from that apparatus sub button. Now, if you're interested in more on the apparatus maintenance, then I highly recommend our apparatus maintenance module video on YouTube. It will cover essentially what we just covered, but it'll go a little further into the reporting as well and some of the other items on the setup. So if you're interested in some more on that or you want to see it again, go to our YouTube video on apparatus maintenance. All right, so then our other items that we have available for sub buttons, these are new with this version. So you will not have seen this in your, your previous version. You're going to see this new when we update you. So on the training module, we've added some sub buttons. I'm actually going to show you the, the, the one on the right first, the personnel report. This is actually available through the employee module as well. If you go to the training tab on any person, you'll see a print button and it will give you a popover very similar to this one. Now the popover in the employee module is a lot more descriptive. So if you need a report that's a little bit more specific than what you can get here, then you're going to need to still go to the employee module. But we wanted to give you a quick view, easy access to that reporting. So it's available here as a sub button. So if you need to see all the training records, maybe for this month, maybe for last month, then you can do that. And you can also sort by the training name as well. If we leave those blank, it's just going to give us everything. So if I click continue, then I can get that report. And you can see it automatically goes to that location that I mentioned. So the employee record, any record, the training tab, and that print button. So you can see this popover is a little more descriptive. So you can get a, a smaller report, more specific report if you need to. And you can also decide the report format here. So if you need that, then you would need to come to this print button. But from the main menu, we've given you a popover to make that easier. So the other sub button that we have under the training module is the in-service training. Now this is essentially a quick way to add training into Station Smarts. There's two different places that it could get saved. So if you schedule your training in advance, then I would go through the training module. You can still schedule it in advance. It'll still show up in the training console that you can keep track of that scheduled training. If you don't schedule your training in advance, but you want to essentially just record the training you've done after you've done it, then this is gonna be the sub button for you. And it's a great way to store not only that training that you're doing that's standard based that you would normally would schedule in advance and you wanna track if it meets ISO standard, OSHA standard, that kind of thing, 
This is also for that training that doesn't really meet any standards, but it's training that you still want to record into the employee records. So I can come in here and I can say uh, the type of training that it was. The general training is that training we don't need to track standards on. Maybe it's just something that we want to record in their employee record, but it's not something that, that meets any kind of OSHA or ISO or you know that kind of standard. So I could say general training. Notice on the right hand side, it's giving me all of the on-duty personnel. The idea here is that you did it in service. It wasn't scheduled in advance. So it's going to automatically grab the roster personnel. So you do want to record these directly after you've done the trainings or at least, you know, same day. So you have those names there, but you don't have to do it. If you want to use this popover, I would do it the same day, but you can still record these trainings through the activity tracker for different days if you need to. But I'm gonna go through and say, okay, these are the four that actually attended. The other two actually had to go out on an emergency response during this time. And I'm gonna say it was for an hour. And I'm actually gonna add a new training name. Let's just say we were hose laying. Okay, and then we can give a little note here. And then I'm gonna click continue. The solution is actually going to create an activity tracker entry and notice that hose lang was new. I typed it in, I didn't choose it from a list. The system knows that it's new. So it's saying this isn't in the list. Do we wanna add it? I'm gonna say yes. So it's automatically in there now. So the next time that I do a training that's a general training, it's not standards based, then it's gonna actually allow me to choose hose lang or I can type in a new item and add it to the list. Now I can preview that list here I can also manage the table where that is stored. So if you wanted to go through and add all of your different ones that you can think of all at once, so you have them in an easy list right away, then that's available to you as well. And then the standards base will actually grab directly from the training module. So if you just wanna record that you did something, but you already have a training module entry for that and you wanna keep recording it there, then you can say standards based and it's gonna keep track of those items for you. Now you'll notice that just like in the training module, we have some items here to be able to submit it into the employee records. So I'm gonna come up here, just a quick summary. We have one hours posted here. We've got the item here that's a test. We've got the instructor, we've got the attendees. So I'm gonna go ahead and say insert. And we've got just a little feedback here, essentially saying we're gonna insert an hour into these four employees, are you sure? I'm gonna say okay. And it just entered into the employee records. So it also has a training ID, so we have all of that information. So all of that has been stored. It's been recorded into their records. So now if we were to click here, so we've got here, it's, it's already been inserted and it's telling me Boudreaux, Gray, Kramer, Tommel. So if I go to any one of their records, so really quickly, I'm just gonna go to Boudreaux, and then we can see right here, there's that training, hose laying today for one hour, so that's perfect. So that's now available to you. You can record any kind of training in service that's available. All right, so then moving on, the last sub buttons that we have available here for you, on the Infers tab, we have the data analysis and we have the inverse status. Now the inverse status is essentially the status of all of your reports. So do you have any reports that have not been started? Are they in process? Are there some waiting to be reviewed still? And this is essentially a all dates kind of view so you can make sure that you've submitted all of your reports to the state. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna leave everything blank. By doing this, it'll give me everything. So if I click continue, then you can see I have six pages and these are separated based on the report. So you can see there are two that are in process. They haven't been assigned to anyone. And then I have one that was assigned to Gray that's not started. I have one assigned to Lawless that's not started. I have several that are not started that didn't have a roster found so they didn't get assigned to anyone as responsible right away. And then I have two assigned to me. I have one that's in process, one that's not started. So this is just a report to help you know the status of all of your reports. And you can actually look at that as a view if you wanted a smaller set. So I could look at this month only and click continue. You can see I have only two pages now. I have one that's assigned to me and several that are assigned to be reviewed by the chief. So that's available as a sub button for the infers module. And then the second sub button is actually a separate module, much like the fee management, it's data analysis. 
it's going to open as a separate window here. And this is some reporting that we've made available to you from the infers module. So the first one is a monthly report. It's always going to set up as the last month, but you can choose anything here. And if you have data for that, that month period, then it'll run the report for you. So you can see here we have a report for a monthly report for November. So it shows November's months. This is just kind of a summary page. It shows November, October, and then November of last year. And then it gives us a fiscal summary as well. And then if we go to the next page, it shows a breakdown for November. So this is the, the same totals that we saw on the first page, but along with a percentage. It gives us a fire district breakdown, a mutual aid breakdown. So we've got out of town, two were fire, three were EMS, four were other. So you can see 6% is out of town. And then it gives us an aid given, aid received breakdown as well. So that's available as well. So when I click continue, it'll just close the report. All right, so then the special studies. I have two options for the special studies. You have a summary and you have a detail. It's gonna automatically set you up as a summary for last month, and I'll show you what that looks like. So it just gives you all of your reports so far. It tells you the incident code when it was chosen and how many of them there are. And then if you're interested in any one of those, you wanna get some more detail on it, then you can run the detail report. And that will give you the same numbers, the same counts, but it gives you a list of all of the incidents that were counted toward that number. So. If you had a question about maybe that no answer that was available. So here's a no answer. So we've got a couple here that are listed as no answer. Then we could go back to those and see why are they a no answer. And it, it's probably because those reports have not been completed yet this month. All right, so if I just click continue, that'll close that. So that's some reporting that's available. We have a lot more reports that are gonna be coming in the future. So that is a summary of all of the sub buttons that we have added. We also have made a change to the fire station news. So in the past, you could delete anything and it will just allow you to delete it. In the setup now, we have an option for you to be able to say whether or not you want to allow everyone to be able to delete. So if you have that option unchecked, then it was not gonna be available to everyone only department administrators are going to be able to make deletion options. So if you have that unchecked, then you have to be a local admin to delete an entry. All right, now I want to highlight a couple of changes that we've made in the modules themselves. So the first change that I want to highlight is in the employee module. And that's going to be in the profile tab. We've added some authorizations here. So if you want to be able to control who can post to an employee record, who can record a training record. We've broken that out a little bit more. So if you have it marked across here that they can create modified training records, then they'll be able to do both. But if you uncheck that and only check one of these, then that will allow you to control whether or not they can post it, but they can't post to the employee record or maybe they can post to the employee record both. So that just gives you some more control over specifically what they're doing with the training records. We've also included in this update, local admins are able to now control the employee records and setting up the security. So if I click here, the manage user account access, I can now create new accounts. So in the past, when you created an employee record, you had to let us know that you had a new employee and we would create their login. This is now going to allow you to create their login and you can also enable it, disable it. So if you have someone go inactive, then you can come in here and disable their account so they won't be able to log in anymore. In the past, we've done that for you. Uh, and then the resetting passwords and changing passwords are gonna be through here as well. So an employee can log in to their record and change their own password, or a local admin can log in and reset their password for them. Now, if you click to reset, it automatically resets to that employee record password is going to be reset to the setup. So if I click cancel here, go to the main menu, go to the setup, and that's going to be on the forms and services. You can see sign in account defaults. That password is the default password for the system. So if you have that set, then when you click reset, it's going to reset to that password. If this is empty, then it'll reset to data on fire. All right, there have been a couple of changes that we've made to the property and hydrants. Now, the reason I'm saying that together is because we've actually completed the connection between the hydrants and the properties. So if I choose Alma Road for 10, 
10 Alma Road and then click that hydrants button. The system's going to open in the property module and it's going to go to the new hydrant tab and it's showing us all of the hydrants in that view. Now you'll notice that this is actually showing it within Google Maps. So you have all of Google Maps to be able to manage this. So anything Google Maps normally would let you do, then you can do here. So if you have those little blue lines where you can walk across the street, if Google has built those into your town, then you could actually walk across the street to view the hydrants. You can also see the satellite view here. You can zoom in and out. And you'll notice that all of those dots are blue. We actually have a couple of things that actually happen when we render this. So the blue means that they're in service. And then if you have main flow, the, the main size listed there, then that main size will actually show up on the icon as well. So you can tell which ones are bigger, which ones are smaller, and that, that'll be available to you. Okay, so along with that hydrant mapping, we also have added some items in the hydrant module itself. So you can see down here we've added, we've expanded the inspection tracking. So this is going to allow you to be able to track a lot more specific items on the inspection tracking, specifically on hydrants. So it's going to actually be best suited for if you need to go around and check your hydrants, whether or not they're going to be under the snow, whether or not they're covered in bush, that kind of thing. Then you can record the inspections that you've done here, who completed them, that kind of thing. When notes, is there something that needs to be taken care of? Now, if you do an inspection and you find that there is a problem with the hydrant, then we've actually added this notification as well. So you can grab the directory selections here of who needs to be contacted about those. And then you can send an email directly out and it'll give you the hydrant location, the notes that you had made, and you can make changes to this email just like your other notifications that you do in the system. So that's available there as well. We've also added a district mapping option here. So this will allow you to mark which district each of your hydrants are in. So if you if you want to walk through the districts or you want to assign hydrants to a specific company for inspections, that kind of thing, you can actually record those districts here. And then when you click this magnifying glass, it'll actually do a find of those hydrants. So you could do a find list. And then in the list view, you'll have the same capability. So in that list view, we've added that inspection history. So you can see the last time that an inspection was done and you can also see the status there and the number. So that's available along with the district. The other module I wanna point out changes that we've made is the infers module. So in the actual infers reporting, so I'm gonna to go to last week. So we have changed the logic on this edit button now. So if I'm not this person, then I won't be able to open this unless I have infers approval ability. So if I actually, I'm gonna actually open my record here. Uh, so in the infers pile, I'm gonna take away my infers approval capability right now. So then if I try to open this again, then you'll see it won't let me open it because I don't have the infers approval ability. So this will allow you to control who can open, start, create reports, make changes to them, that kind of thing. So you can see this particular report was actually filled out by Lawless and it's been assigned to Stowers to be approved. So those are the only two people that can open the report unless you have an infers approval capability. So if I were to check that off again in my record and then try to open this report again, then I can open that report and I can open this report. So if you have the infers approval ability, you can open anything, no matter who's been assigned to who created it. But if it's been assigned to someone, you don't have infers approval, you can't start it if it's not you, you can't edit it if it's not you, and that kind of thing. Now you can change the name, so if you have that assign ability, so this assign here, then you could reassign that report to yourself or to someone else if it needs to be reassigned to someone else and then that would be available to you. So, so if this were assigned to someone else, I don't have the approval ability, I just took that off again, uh, then it, it won't let me start it. But because I have the assign ability, I can reassign it to myself to say, actually, I'm the one that needs to create the report. So then I would be able to click the start and it'll run through the start, create that report for me. All right, so that's available there. Now, another change that we have made actually in the inverse form. So in the inverse form, itself. So we've made a change to the aid given received. We've added a pop over here. So this will allow you to track 
all of the aid that you have received. So if you have an option, one or two chosen, then this link will be available. You can record however many fire departments responded, so you can keep track of that. Now this isn't gonna get reported to infers at all. They don't want this information, but this is for your information if you wanna record this and keep track of how many people are responding to your incidences, how many times did Stowe respond when you requested aid, that kind of thing, then that's available to you. Also within the infers, we have built out the print review. Now this is only going to be available for infers one, infers two, infers six. If you have a report that uses the other forms and you need those forms, we still need to create that report for you. Most of your reports are probably gonna be infers one, infers two, infers six. So, so I would just click continue and this knows what's in use, what's not in use. So when I click continue, it's just gonna give me that, that pretty printout. So that's gonna be available to you now. You can print those reports for most of your reports that's gonna be available. But again, if you have a report that needs infers two, I'm sorry, infers three, four, five, arson module, infers 11, so any of those other modules, then you would need to ask us to complete that report for you. And there's actually a, a link in here to request it. So if you have a report that you need and that module is not available, you can actually click that link and it's gonna pre-create an email to send us a request for that report. So it's really easy to go ahead and request that. So you're gonna to go to the same place and just click that link to request the report from us and we'll get that to you typically same day. Okay, so the last item I wanna show you in this update video is in the setup. I just wanna mention it very quickly. We have built out the option for you to change the names for your inspection form. So we're not adding current forms just yet, but if there is a current form that you've been using and you don't like how it's named, the very common one so far is fire safety survey. Departments have said they don't like the term survey. If that's true for your department as well, we can go ahead and change that name for you. So just let me know if you have a setup change that you wanna to make to these names. It is something I need to do for you. You won't be able to do this yourself, but let me know if you wanna make that change and we'll be able to change those names for you. That change will not affect previous reports. It will only affect future reports. So if you have any that are scheduled that haven't been inspected yet, you will need to recreate those scheduled if you want them to use the new name. And this has been a summary of all of the updates in Station Smarts. If you have further questions about any updates that we've made, or if you have recommendations for updates you'd like to see in the future, just let me know. You can contact me at heather at stationsmarts.com. So any information that you wanna give us on those updates, or if you need further help, again, feel free to go back to our YouTube channel and to surf the videos that we have available there. We're building those videos out more and more. So if you have any questions, we probably have a video on an answer to, the, to your question. So feel free to surf through those videos to get the answers that you need.